What does that even mean, Bowers Game? Well, hello there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today, I'm very excited to check it out Open Sesame from IDW Games and Antoine Bowser. This is for three to five players, taking about 20 minutes to play. It's for ages 10 plus. And in Open Sesame, this is a press your luck treasure hunting memory game with a heavy emphasis on the memory game. It's from Antoine Bowser, my favorite game designer of all time now. But is it good? Let's open it up and I'll tell you. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Open Sesame. First and foremost, we got our handy dandy rule booklet. It's about six, seven pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. And it's very well done. I'll have you up and running in no time at all. So in Open Sesame, you are going to be trying to gain the most of these treasure cards right here. You're going to be doing that by taking turns playing as Alibaba. When you're Alibaba, you have a pretty easy job. It's just a little bit of a push-your-luck game. However, when you're not Alibaba, aka the majority of the time, you are going to be trying to remember exactly exactly what cards are in Alibaba's hand. Uh, if you have the most treasure cards at the end of the game, the most different treasure cards at the end of the game, you'll be the winner. So what am I talking about? Let's show you the components, then we'll get into the gameplay. So component-wise, we'll go over the cards real quick. They're the easiest part. Uh, this is a monkey. There's a monkey in the cavern. So if you had this card, Alibaba had this card in his hand, and you started off, you would just have to say there's a monkey in the cavern. You got that correct, it would move on to the next player. So Alibaba keeps this in his hand. Nobody else can see this now. He'd draw another card right here. So he would show it to everyone. Say there is a, what is that? That's a, uh, a chest. So there is a chest. I have a chest. He would put it in his hand. Now the next player would have to say, all right, in the cavern, there's a monkey and a chest. If he does that successfully, then you will continue on to the next card. Unless, of course, Alibaba wanted to stop. So... You might notice that there's a bell up in the upper right-hand corner right here. And you might notice that, oh, there's tokens down here. Yes, these tokens are where the push-your-luck aspect of the game comes into play. So when Alibaba draws a card, so let's pretend this is the first card, he has to take whatever symbol is in the upper right-hand corner. Some cards will have it, some will not. So now he has a bell in front of him. Why is that important? Well, because if Alibaba ever gets all three of a, uh, a kind of token, so like that in front of him, he loses the round. Likewise... If he ever gets one of each in front of him, he loses the round. So as he continues to go deeper into the cave and get more treasure, there is a higher risk that he is going to bust. And if he busts, everybody else gets cards and he gets no cards, which obviously is not what he wants to do. So let's take back one more look at the card. One more important thing to note down here is in the bottom right-hand corner. It shows you how many of those cards there are in the game. Some are going to be, uh, so for instance, this necklace, there's three of them. So that one you probably don't want to take early on as a piece of treasure. Flute, there's three of them. So that one's not too rare. However, watermelon, there's only one watermelon so if you get a chance to get this card it's a fantastic card to get now there's one more special card in this game which is this guy right here he is the uh, i don't know he's a soldier dude and he is going to trigger the end of the game once he comes up that means that that will be the last round you are playing he does count as a treasure as well uh so that is something of important to note so i'll show you exactly how the game is going to be played you're going to pick the first person to be Alibaba, they're going to have this nice little standee right here. And what they're going to do is they're going to draw a card. And uh, let's mix it up a little bit since we know what the top cards were. So he draw a rug. And he would show everyone a rug. He'd say, I have a rug. I picked up a rug. And he puts it in his hand and no one else will be able to see this the remainder of this round. So now the first player, the player to your left, is going to say, all right, in the cavern, you have a rug, most likely. Pretty simple. So now it's Alibaba's choice. Does he want to push his luck or does he want to say, uh, open sesame and leave the cave. Obviously, he doesn't want to leave the cave because he's at no risk of busting. So he would draw another card. He would show everyone this pillow. He'd say, I have a pillow. He would show everyone the pillow, put it back into his hand. And now the next player is going to have to say, in the cavern, I have a rug and a pillow or a pillow and a rug. It doesn't matter what order you say it in. So we'd move on to the next player. And boom, he's got the camel. So he'd say, I have a camel. He would show it to everyone. He would grab the bell, because as we mentioned, he has to grab whatever's in the right-hand corner. And then now the next player would say, I have a, uh, a camel and a rug and a pillow. You get it. Now, what happens when someone screws up? Well, there's three ways that a round can end, and I will go over them right now. So the first one is that if someone screws up, and this, this tends to happen quite frequently, especially if you're playing with people with bad memory. So... If a thief is telling you what is in your hand and he is wrong, what's going to happen is he gets zero of the treasure right there. Alibaba is going to pick 
three of the treasures, and then everyone else is going to go around in a circle, taking one at a time. So let's just pretend that we had, uh, say, six cards in our hand, seven cards in our hand in a three-player game. Uh, Alibaba might decide to take these three cards right here, and then this player would take this card, this player would take this card, a uh, four-player game, excuse me. This player, since he was the one that busted and, and made the mistake, gets no cards. So Alibaba would get a fourth card, and this guy would get a second card. And then you would continue on on your merry way, moving the Alibaba token. Now, the next scenario is that Alibaba has screwed up, and he has pushed his luck a little bit too far, and he's either gotten uh, three different chips, three of the different chips, or three of a kind. So maybe let's pretend he got three blue. So what happens then? Well, Alibaba gets zero chips. Uh, so he gets no chips, or excuse me, he gets none of the cards at all. And then everyone else is just going to pass the cards around and split them. So if, let's pretend that there's, say, you know, one, two, three, four, eight cards right here. Alibaba gets zero cards. This guy'd get a card, a card, a card, a card, a card, a card. So you don't want to bust because that means all of your opponents are going to gain, and they're going to gain uh, potentially pretty big depending on when you bust. The last scenario is if Alibaba is about to bust, and he's worried about busting, and he says, open sesame, and he stops. What happens then is he says, open sesame, Alibaba is going to reveal his hand to the thieves, share all the treasure cards in Alibaba's hand, so he's going to take a card and then just pass them around. And uh, that is pretty much how it's going to work. He doesn't get as much, but he does. He is going to get the same amount as everyone else. But anywho, you are going to end the game once you finish the round after you ran into the red guy right there. And then at the end of the game, only the only amount of points you're going to have is how many individual points pieces you have. So let's take a look at, let's just pretend that this was this guy's hand right here. So we'd have one point because he's got a rug, two points, three points, four points, five points, six points, seven points. So let's see, he gets one for this because he doesn't have any of that. One for this, he would not get a point for this. So he has two of these, that's unfortunate. You only get one point for these. So we'd have one, two, three, four, five, and then six, since this is only worth one point. So he would have six points. Whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. And that, in a nutshell, is how Alibaba, or excuse me, Open Sesame. Oh, great, don't great. Open Sesame from IDW Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros. Let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody. It's a very light Press your luck memory game. There's not many decisions here. There's not many interesting choices or veering paths to make. It's either of your Alibaba, do you want to press your luck, or do you remember what's in Alibaba's hands? That's really the extent of the game. Also, you know, uh, the scoring system is very simple, so that's going to be a turnoff to some people. Um, the theme is pretty pasted on. You know, you can make this theme about just about anything. You're not going to feel like you're exploring caves and getting treasure or anything like that. Uh, but the biggest comment I have is this is a memory game. First and foremost, it's a memory game. And that actually makes this game very easy to review. So moving on to the pros and also the con, if you like memory games, I really think you're going to enjoy this game. It is a lot of fun, it's quick, it's easy to learn, it's easy to teach, it has nice artwork, good components, uh, appealing box, you know, it's, it's, it's just a total package. If you like memory games, if you don't like memory games, you're going to want to steer clear of this, period, because it is nearly 100% memory. There's like 2% push your luck, which I do, I enjoy the little push your luck aspect, and it does make things a little dicey when you're Alibaba and you have, you know, maybe you have a gray, uh, two greens and a yellow, and it's like, oh man, if I hit a green or if I hit a blue, I am just so totally screwed. I like that. Uh, but I really do enjoy this game. I enjoy memory games, so this is a no-brainer for me. I, I like this as a light filler game on game night. I, li I think this is a great family game. This is a great gateway game. Yes, this is a fantastic introduction game. You having a couple over who doesn't play games, you want to introduce them to something light? Look no further. This is very, very simple. Oh, no, 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 trust me. It's easy. All you got to do is uh, just remember what's in my hand. That's the entire game. And at first, you're be like, really? That's it? But along the way, people will start having fun. Um, one of my favorite things about this game is when people start making stories. Because some people, the key to them for winning this game is to make stories up in their head. Oh, so inside the cavern, there was a watermelon. But inside the watermelon, there were two flutes. 
and, and there was an elephant sitting on top of the flute and he had a sword that came out of his nose. And, and for some people, that's really helpful. But what's funny is for other people that really, they just like, uh, two flutes, sword, elephant, two flutes, sword, elephant, two flutes, sword, elephant, two flutes, sword, elephant. So I think there's two flutes, a sword, and an elephant. And, and it's just fun to see how different people play the game. So overall, for me personally, I highly recommend this game if, if you're in the market for a filler game, and if you like memory games. If not, you're definitely going to want to steer clear. But if you are, this is a great one to check out. Another solid, solid game from Antoine Thousand and IDW. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know memory games. What are your thoughts on them? I am terrible at memory games. I, I've done some, I've made some poor choices which have killed my memory along the way, but I really do enjoy them. I'm a little bit of an Omni gamer, so I like nearly every genre, uh, but I, I like it. I think it's fun just trying to, when you get to that, you're like, oh, I know there was one more card, and you're like stretching your brain, and you're like, I can do calculus, and I can't remember what was the last thing in the cave. I, I like it. I like memory games, but I know some people do not. Let me know in the comments below. If you do, if you don't, if you do, let me know a great memory game that you know of, because uh, I'd like to get some more. I don't think I have too many. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.